Hey, hi, thanks for joining me in this devlog. I'm making a third person shooter game where you can transform and climb stuff. The to-do list for this month includes level design, player movement and alien wildlife. I've never been the best at level design. In the past I would always model individual assets in Blender and then bring them into Unity to try and put the level together. That's super inefficient and so this month I decided to learn Pro Builder. I've actually noticed people using Pro Builder in several other devlogs and so I wanted to try it out for myself. After playing around with the tool for a couple of days and learning some hotkeys, I set out to make my first level. Sadly, after working on a level for about a week, Unity crashed and overwrote my entire scene. The professional that I am, I hadn't backed up anything in two weeks and so it was time to start over. I figured I might as well try to make something better than last time, and so this time I started by drawing some designs on paper. There's a lot of factors that go into designing a level space. You have to make sure the space fits the looks and aesthetics of the rest of the game, it needs to have a purpose inside the game world, it needs to have proper lighting and it also has to look decent on the outside, but most importantly, spaces need to be fun to navigate. The fact that players can climb anywhere in my game makes this last part quite a challenge. For my original design I made the mistake of only looking at games like Titanfall and Doom without keeping in mind the climbing mechanic. If I'm only taking inspiration from shooter games, the levels would be focused way too much around running and jumping. For the new level design, I paid a lot less attention to existing games and tried to come up with something myself instead. It's not done yet, but I'm quite happy with the blockout. At this point I got a bit bored doing the level design and so I moved on to improving the player movement. Currently when climbing a wall, W is always up and S is always down. This works in most cases, but it completely breaks when you're trying to climb over an edge. Imagine the player is holding down W and moves towards an edge. Now when the creature reaches the edge, it'll start to move down the wall. At this point you're holding down W while on the wall, meaning the creature will move back up. The player ends up in an infinite loop of moving up and down the wall. To counter this issue, I compared the regular wall climbing with the edge situation from before. You may notice there's one thing that immediately stands out and that is the camera direction relative to the player. Normally the up direction of the player points towards the camera, however when you're about to move down an edge the player's up direction actually points away from the camera. This means I can take the dot product between the camera forward direction and the player up direction and when it's greater than zero I invert the wall climbing. Next I implemented Coyote Time. If you've watched any game dev videos before you've probably heard this term a million times and basically what it means is after players move off of a platform they'll have a couple extra frames to jump. So instead of only allowing players to jump when grounded, I've added a small timer that keeps track of the amount of frames since the player was last grounded. This allows for jumping even when you're technically not grounded anymore. Finally, for the player improvements, I've also added wall staking. Previously, anytime the player was jumping towards a wall and then switched to the creature mid-air, he'd sort of get stuck in the air. To fix that, I'm sending out a bunch of raycasts from the player to detect the nearest surface. It then smoothly moves and rotates the creature towards that surface. After making those improvements, I got a bit sidetracked trying to make the terrain from a short hike. I've actually attempted to make a stylus terrain shader before, but never really got the splat maps to work properly. This time though, instead of trying to build everything from scratch, I used the built-in amplified template and really just modified it to support triplanar mapping. I've also added sharp edges for the texture painting using Adam Grio's explanation on Twitter, and I added custom tune shading. The reason I'm mentioning this at all is the terrain shader in my main project is hard-coded. Most of it I took directly from Harry's tutorial, meaning I can barely understand, let alone modify that shader. With my newfound knowledge I was able to replicate the original terrain shader in Amplify and now I can do all sorts of cool stuff like projecting emojis and messing up the terrain. I can now also add more variation to the texture to make it look more natural, so that's actually really useful. With the terrain looking better, it was finally time to make the world a bit more alive. Big robots and drones are nice, but I also want the world to have some friendly inhabitants, so let's go ahead and design some alien wildlife. With the first creature modeled and textured, I jumped straight into animating. This time I decided against choosing procedural animation and instead just did the animations by hand. Mainly because I need some very specific gates for these alien creatures that would be very hard to get right through code. 
These creatures are also quite small so their feet don't necessarily have to align perfectly with the terrain. Obviously snail elephants don't exist in real life and so I didn't have a direct reference when animating. Instead I tried to replicate the horse's walk cycle. This went surprisingly well and after setting up a couple more animations, here's the result. For them to move around like that, I wrote a couple scripts to mark areas on the map and then assigned those areas to my creatures. This way every creature knows to stay inside its own assigned areas. Finally I added a weird chicken dinosaur combination, it's like a very small T-Rex that instead of tiny arms just doesn't have arms at all. Making this one was pretty much the exact same process as making the snail elephant. I hope this was interesting, thanks for watching.